Hi, my name is Dr. Rich Minlow and I'm the Fish Vet. In this week's video, we called out to see Fritz, a three-year-old betta who's developed a tumour on the side of his body. So here we're going to catch up Fritz to um, anaesthetise him. So we gently corral him into the net. Let's put him in the anaesthetic. Anesthetic we're using is slightly higher than normal because the uh, labyrinth breather, so they're not as efficient at using the gills. Um, and it's quite um, different when you're anesthetizing these guys, um, in that because they are air breathers, um, you need to make sure that they can control themselves so that they don't drown. So you just gotta keep a, a good eye, a good watch on them as they go under. And because maintaining them under anesthesia is a bit more complex than other fish because of that, um, that reason, uh, what we'll do is we're going to give them some um, anti-inflammatory um, as a painkiller uh, before we actually start uh, removing the lump. How do you know he's um, ready to? How? Uh, basically, we just look for signs of slowing down, loss of balance. Uh, and then we would do a pinch test, so we would pinch the base of the tail um, to see whether he's feeling any pain. If he doesn't feel pain, uh, there won't be that uh, reaction or flinching. Mm -hmm. yeah. So right now he's still maintaining balance. So we sort of um, move him to the side to disorientate him a little bit to see whether he's staying or not. Okay, so Chris here is... Uh, Sleeping now, finally. Uh, I've had to use probably approximately twice the normal dose rate to use for normal fish. Uh, so we just lift them up out of the water now. So here we're going to remove uh, the, the tumor with a scalpel blade. You can see the scalpel blade is pretty big. Um, so it can't do such a clean job, like this is pretty much like microsurgery that we're doing. Um, so we can't get all the bits of pieces that we need out. So we'll follow that through with some electrocordery. What we're doing here is we're taking samples for lab testing, initially on slides for cytology, uh, and then in neutral buffer formalin if we need to do histopathology. So removing the remnants of the tumor, drying that with a gauze swab, uh, the reason for that, when we're using electrocautery, we want the heat very precisely at that particular spot that we apply. We don't want to use, um, we don't want it to be wet, otherwise the heat can dissipate or spread to other parts of the body. So that's why we want the surface to be quite dry. So now we're going to treat the, um, the open wound like you would with an ulcer. So we flush that with some uh, dilute betadine, 1 in 10 to 1 in 20 solution, and then put some of this fish bandage, and then again soak it up uh, with some more of that dilute betadine. Uh, along with this treatment, we actually also gave um, intramuscular um, flunixin and also oxytetracycline, uh, an anti-inflammatory and a systemic antibiotic. And here, what we're doing is we're um, reviving uh, Fritz, so we just put him in aerated water again, shallow dish, and we're going to be irrigating the gills with the uh, syringe. So here you see, he's slowly awakening, uh, but in this process, what we're going to do is, again, as we mentioned earlier, we, we put him in a shallow dish, uh, maybe also hold him in a net, so that he's always got access to atmospheric air, Otherwise, these fish can drown. So here, what I've done is, with the clean slides, I took a swab uh, in case we want to run it for bacteriology, in case that tumor is caused by a bacteria. So this tumor is made up of iridophores. Iridophores are actually normal skin cells uh, that reflect the light that gives the fish that metallic look and sheen to it. Uh, but what's happened here is that the cells have actually mutated, become cancerous, 
and that's why it's grown into this lump. But it's actually good news because initially we were suspecting this could be mycobacteria or otherwise known as fish TB because they can present in this way and that is an incurable disease whereas this tumor known as iridophoroma is actually a benign tumor so the prognosis for this fish is going to be good we're going to keep an eye on it if it grows again uh, what we'll do is we would remove part of it or as much of it as we can and we just keep an eye on the fish so he'll have much longer lifespan uh, to go so good for fritz so here's a skin scraping from the beta fritz and we've put, applied a dye called Difquick. Uh, so you can see a lot of these cells around here these are belonging to the tumor cells you can see also a lot of these black dots these are the melano that come from the melanocytes to give them the dark coloration. Uh, in, in these cells, um, they had these um, non-staining rods which some people may jump to and say possibly uh, mycobacteria because they're non-staining if you remember from our epistogramma movie. Um, but we ran the ZN stain, that was negative. And now what we've done is we've put it under polarizing light and have a look. So here we've put it under the microscope, under polarized light, and you can see these things, these rods actually light up like jewelry. And this is the a physical characteristic of iridophore crystals. You can see them pretty abundant all through the slide. The iridophores, their function is actually to reflect light. So this gives them the metallic look um, in a lot of fish. Um, so all these things here, uh, crystals, and this is why they refract the light. So here's Fritz back in his tank. He's still waiting for the anesthetic to wear off. He's standing next to his jellyfish. That wraps up our fish tumor in a beta. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe so you get updates on our latest videos and have a fantastic week.